Okay then, so in the last lesson we saw how to create a layout file which wrapped the page content and we did that by making a layout file inside a folder called components within the views folder. We also said that what we're doing here is actually making what's known as a component which is why we put it in that components folder because when we do that Blade allows us to use those components in other views by using them as a tag like inside the index view and the tag starts with an X to tell Blade this is a custom component that we're using and it's followed by a dash and then the component name itself. So this pattern isn't unique to just layouts. We can create custom components for pretty much any reusable content and then we can use them inside our views. For example, we might want to make some kind of reusable UI component like a card and all that card template would live in its own Blade file inside the components folder then we can just drop that card component into whatever other view that we want when we need it. So this is a good pattern because it means we'll be reducing a lot of code duplication for common UI elements that might appear in multiple different views. In this lesson then, what we're gonna do is make a reusable card component, which can then be dropped into the index view to wrap each ninja. So then inside the components folder, we're gonna make a new file called card.blade.php. And then inside this file, I'm gonna quickly make a simple template for some kind of card component. So that's gonna be a div with a class of card. Doesn't exist that class yet, but again, that's for styling purposes later on. Inside that div, we're gonna output the special slot variable, which remember is a placeholder for whatever content this component will wrap. And then below the slot, we're also gonna make an anchor tag with a class of BTN. And the text is gonna say something like view details. Now I'm gonna come back to the href attribute later on, but what's clear for now is that we don't wanna hard code this to be some URL because then every time we use the card component, we're linking to the same URL, right? And it makes the component a bit redundant and less reusable. So we'll leave it blank for now and uh, this will do for the simple template to begin with, which is now ready to be used to wrap whatever content we might want to put inside a card. And that content could be anything. And it's going to be then rendered inside this card where the slot variable is. So then I'm going to use this card inside the index view where we loop through the list of ninjas and output a bit of content for each one. So inside this loop, I'm first of all going to delete everything except for the li tag. Then within that, we can use the special component tag, which starts with an X, then a dash, and then the component name, which is card. And we also need the closing tag for the component as well. Now remember, inside the card component, we used the slot variable to represent whatever content this card wraps. So let's add some content inside here, and I'm just gonna add an H3 inside it and the text for that H3 is going to be the name value of the ninja that we're currently iterating within the loop. So now this H3 content is going to get rendered within the card component where that slot variable is. Right then. So this is still going to look bad in the browser because we don't have any styling yet, but at least we can see if it works. And sure enough in a browser, we can see those ninjas right here. And if we right click to inspect one of these, then we should see that div with the class of card and then the H3 with the ninja name below that, the button. So this was the content that the card wrapped where the slot was. And then this anchor tag was part of the card component in itself. Okay then, so now we've made this card component and it can be reused whenever we need it. But currently in the component, there's no href value for the link and we need that to go somewhere. Now we know we can't hard code this because then for every card, the link is gonna be the same. So we need some way of passing the href attribute value into the component so we can access it. And we need to do that from a place where the card component is actually being used inside the index view. Now there's a couple of different ways we can do this, but the easiest and probably one of the better approaches is to first of all, add an href attribute to the component tag itself. Now, I know this doesn't make much sense yet because hrefs are meant to be only on anchor tags and this isn't an anchor tag. It's a custom component, but just bear with me. For now, I wanna pass whatever the href value should be on the anchor tag into this href attribute right here. Now we know the path should be forward slash ninjas, forward slash, and then the ninja ID. So we can output that by using the curly braces, remember, and then accessing the ID from the ninja variable, which is the ninja from the for each loop. Okay then, so 
Now we're passing this href attribute into the card component and we can access that using a special attributes variable that we automatically get access to inside any blade component. So now inside the card component, I can come to the anchor tag and inside the href attribute here, I could use curly braces to output a dynamic value. And then we use this special attributes variable automatically provided to us. And on that, we can use a get method to get an attribute that gets passed into this component. So we passed in the href attribute and that means we can access it right here. So any legitimate HTML attributes that get passed into the component like we just did with the href attribute, they get attached to this special attributes variable. And then we can use the get method on that to get whatever attribute we want, which was passed into the component. Now, if we try to access an attribute that we didn't pass into the component, then that value is just gonna be empty. But we know that we did pass the attribute into the component, so this should work. Also, because we know the only attribute getting passed into this component is an href attribute, there's actually an easier way to write this. This is fine, by the way, you can do it this way, but there is an easier way. So we can get rid of the href altogether, and then inside the anchor tag, we can just use the curly braces and then output the attributes variable. And what this does is take any HTML attributes that we pass into the component and it outputs them all right here. So because we only passed in the href attribute, that's gonna be the only attribute output here in the anchor tag. But if we also passed in a class attribute to the component, then it's gonna output that one here as well. And any and all attributes that we pass in are gonna get output wherever we place this attributes variable like this within a tag. Now, like I just said, we only pass in the href, so this is gonna work just as we want it to. All right, so let's try this out now. If we click on this, it should go to forward slash ninjas forward slash one, which it does, so the href is working for that one, and this one should be forward slash two, which it is, awesome. So now we're successfully passing that href attribute into the component, and we're using that with the special attributes variable that we get access to within that component. So then we have seen how we can pass these HTML attributes into components and then access those using the attributes variable inside the component itself. And we could do this with any legitimate HTML attribute like class or name or type, and we could affix those to the correct elements within the component. But what if I wanted to pass in a custom attribute, something which doesn't exist on any HTML element? For example, I might want to pass in an attribute called highlight, and the value of that would either be true or false. Then inside the component, we could use that highlight value to do something like conditionally apply a class to the card. Well, we can do this, only this time it's not an attribute that we're passing in really, because this attribute doesn't exist in HTML. Instead, when we pass in custom properties, it's known as a prop, a bit like you'd use in something like React or Vue. So then, imagine I wanted to pass a Boolean, either true or false, as a value to a highlighted prop. If it's true, then we add a highlight class on the card somewhere so that we can style it a bit differently. If it's false, then we don't add that class. So I could pass the value true here to do that, right? Well, not exactly, because what I'm doing here is passing a string value, the word true, into the component and not the Boolean value true. So by default, whenever you pass a value as a prop, it's a string value. Even if I use double curly braces to output some dynamic value here, it's still gonna get passed in as a string value because when we use these curly braces, Blade renders this and outputs this dynamic value as a string before it even gets passed into the component. So then, if you need to pass in a dynamic value which isn't a string as a prop, we can add a colon before the prop name. And this allows us to bind some dynamic value or data to the prop as its value. If you've ever used Vue.js before, this kind of should look familiar because I think it's the same syntax. But now we've got a colon in front of the prop name, we can just pass in a dynamic value. So true, for example, and it doesn't need to be inside curly braces anymore either because the entire value inside those double quotes now is dynamic and it's not a string anymore. All right, cool. So now we've passed the prop value into the component and now we can try accessing it inside the component. So then, when we accept a prop into a component, the first thing we need to do is declare that prop that we're accepting at the top of the file. And to do this, we use a blade directive called props. So we can say at props, 
then parentheses. And inside here, we pass an array of props we want to accept and any default value we want to give to those props. So I could say highlight right here to say we want to accept a highlight prop. And I could also give that a default value by using this as the key inside a named array where the value of this is going to be false. So then this means that by default, the highlight prop value is false within this component unless we override that and we pass in a true value as the prop value, which we did. Okay, so now I could use this highlight prop as a variable called highlight in this component. And we could use that to apply a conditional class to this div. Now to do that, we can use another directive, this time called at class on this element, and we add parentheses at the end of this. Now inside, we pass in an array where we can define key and value pairs. The keys should be the class names and the values should be booleans. If the boolean is false, it means the class isn't added to the element. If the boolean is true, then it means the class is added to the element. So really useful. So I could say add a class of highlight when the highlight variable is true. So now only when the highlight prop is true, will it add this class of highlight to the div? You could also add other classes in this array by just adding other keys, for example, card. And if I don't explicitly provide a value for this, like I did with the highlight one, then it's always going to get applied, which is what I want in this case. And that means I can also get rid of the card class over here that we added before. So now the div always has a class of card, but only sometimes it has a class of highlight when that prop value is true. Now at the moment, back in the index view, we're always passing in a true value so that the highlight class always gets applied. But instead of this, we could perform some kind of comparison which results in a Boolean. So for example, I could say here, dollar sign ninja, and then I'm gonna grab the skill property from that ninja, and I wanna see if it's greater than 70. And remember, each ninja has a skill field as defined inside the routes file when we made that ninja's array. So then now only ninjas which satisfy that condition that have a skill which is greater than 70 are going to have that highlight class applied to the card. All right, so let's test this out. I'm going to refresh first of all, and then I'm going to inspect this down here to see if we have a class of highlight. Well, yes, we do for Mario because we know Mario has a skill of 75, which is over 70. We shouldn't have for this one which we don't, cool, it's just a class of card for Luigi because the skill for Luigi I think was 45, which is less than 70. So then my friends, that is how we can create custom components and how we can pass attributes, but also custom props into components as well.